trying to rest so they can vision my mission to get a million Verbally undenied, these hating niggas are silly I'm the reason why these fools invented the proper stopper Said I spit so hard that they needed some type of blocker Verbal venom uncontrollable, scare them like I'm the Holy Ghost I can give these niggas my pen and they still wouldn't go Get them here with a vision, these niggas lost in their wishing Give these rappers a couple minutes to click up before I diss them I'm the Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy 44 hitting you up with a uh, video where I'm going to talk about DHB just a little bit. But uh, the main topic that I wanted to touch on was ester selection uh, when it comes to running your cycles and blasts or uh, just trying to attain your goals through the use of PEDS. Um, I'm running across a lot of people who are reaching out to me and they are asking about running longer esters for short periods of time. And I don't really think that they quite have a grasp on how esterification works as far as half-life and active life uh, and the actual uh, time that some of these hormones will take to kick in depending upon uh, how they've been estered. So in a lot of cases, uh, guys will write me and they'll say, hey, my coach recommended uh, that I switch compounds up every four weeks. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, uh, especially if you're running uh, similar compounds, you know, as if you're running, let's say you start off with uh, test probe, right? And then you switch over to uh, cypionate because the cypion ester, cypionate ester is still going to uh, remain in your system a little longer. Um, the probe is gonna take a little bit of time to wear out. Uh, but in the meantime, it'll increase your test levels uh, quite substantially in a shorter period of time than cypionate or enanthate would. However, uh, you know, guys will sit there and they'll say, well, I'm going to run this, uh, you know, uh, enanthate ester for four weeks and then I'm going to switch over to, you know, this ester or that ester. And it really doesn't make any sense because some of these esters, they're not really going to show anything until five, six, seven sometimes up to nine weeks in, uh, depending upon what you're running. If you're running EQ, there's a reason why EQ is run for such a long period of time. There's a reason why Masteron is run for such a, a long period of time, especially in the enanthate ester with Masteron. Now you can get an acetate ester, right? It will kick in a little faster, but keep in mind, Masteron is a very mild compound. So therefore you're not gonna really see a whole lot of benefit out of it unless you're already very lean and by very lean, uh, I mean like single digit body fat, you know, it'll give you that hard, dense, grainy look, uh, especially if your diet is on point. But running a cypionate or enanthate ester for four weeks, it really doesn't do any uh, true effect. You're not going to really see the benefit of it. True, you will see something around the time that it normally would kick in, right? Let's say about week five, week six, right? Because you're getting the residual benefit from it. However, if you truly want to see the benefit from a cypionate or an enanthate ester, uh, you're going to have to run it uh, for duration, you know, at least 10, 12 weeks. Now, these are just my opinions, my thoughts and stuff like that. And, you know, I have a basic idea of how half lives and active lives work, you know. So basically, let's let's discuss this. Uh, let's say you pin 400 milligrams of test cypionate, right? About seven days later, right? Uh, yeah, well, depending upon your metabolism and several other individual factors such as hydration and stuff like that, um, you're going to, that 400 milligrams that you pinned is roughly going to be 200 milligrams within your system, right? So you still will have that time and then 14 days later, that 200 milligrams is going to be 100 milligrams, right? 21 days later, that 100 milligrams is going to be 50 milligrams. So you're still seeing some benefit from it, however, at a reduced effect, you know. Um, mainly, I've seen this discussed in people uh, during cuts and stuff like that when they're, when they're trying to get leaner. Now, enanthate ester, cypionate ester, in my opinion, are better for bulking uh, simply because of the longer ester and uh, somewhat, you know, uh, increase in water retention. Not much, right? But we all know that shorter esters, you know, get in, get out faster. They kick in a lot faster. Uh, the more rapidly you're able to build uh, muscle, muscle tissue, right? That will assist with the uh, reduction of adipose tissue because you burn more calories with muscle, right? That will assist in adipose tissue disbursement or uh, breaking it down. So 
it is to your benefit to try to, yes, put on as much muscle as, as quickly as possible. However, another thing that I hear from these coaches, it's like, you know, uh, guys saying that their coaches are telling them that they can put on, you know, ungodly amounts of weight, uh, you know, with people. Now, I have, you know, coached people in, in the past before as far as their cycles and uh, roughly in about the best results I've seen in about 35 days, a guy put on 40 pounds and he still maintained 10% body fat, but he was doing the vertical diet, right? He was His training regimen was, was very exact and precise. He only needed me to tweak a couple of things, right? To bring out and accentuate a couple of body parts, right? But he did manage to put on 40 pounds of uh, lean body mass, which was pretty outstanding. Now, this guy may have been what we call a super responder, somebody who doesn't need an ungodly amount of gear uh, for his body to react to it, right? But once again, all results are individual based, right? Just because, you know, you put on 25 pounds doesn't mean the next guy won't, well, you know, won't put on 40 pounds. He might put on 15 pounds. It all depends. Several factors, genetics, all of that stuff. So when we're talking about running shorter esters uh, for these really short periods of time, you know, like four weeks, understand that test is test is test. Right, bold and on is bold and on. Doesn't matter how it's estered, you still have it in your system because it takes weeks and weeks for those metabolites to clear. Right, the esterification process it's going to basically take weeks for that oil for that hormone to disperse out of your system. Right, whether it be through sweat, uh, urine, or fecal tissue. Right, eventually it will clear out, but it is going to take a long time. So, if you think you're going to run let's say, uh, trend in and date for four weeks and reap the true benefits of trend, uh, I'm sad to say that you're, you're mistaken. If you run trend ace, right, it'll kick in a lot faster, right? It'll clear out a little faster, but you will see the results a little faster. So when you plan on running short cycles, make sure that you understand esterification. Make sure you understand the nature of the compound in which you're taking. A lot of people fail to realize that EQ is very similar to Masteron, right? But of course, it's normally associated with the cypionate ester or the undeclinate ester. The undeclinate, which takes an extremely long time for it to clear your system. I'm talking about freaking, like, I believe it's like 16 to 18 months before all the metabolites are clear out of your system, right? But there's a reason why it's run for 20 weeks you know, uh, bold and on cypionate, right? You can, you can start to see the benefits, you know, 10 weeks in, you know, you can see, you know, uh, where it's really kicking in. And then again, it's one of those compounds that accentuates or complements other compounds, right? Kind of like Proviron does, right? Proviron, you know, is going to uh, make other compounds work a little better, shine a little brighter. So compound selection, ester selection, those are key to any successful cycler blast. So just keep that in mind. These are just, you know, random thoughts that I put together. You know, I shoot everything off the top of my head. I don't have a written script or anything like that, but I just wanted to share this thought, right? And if you, uh, you know, want to comment below, please feel free to do so. Uh, share your input and stuff like that and your experiences, you know, for the betterment of the brotherhood. Now, let's talk about DHB. I've been getting a lot of uh, emails from people uh, saying that one of the companies that I'm no longer associated with uh, their DHB is basically uh, pipless. One guy even wrote me, he said that he had it tested and it came back as a uh, test cypionate, right? So I'm not gonna put the name out there. I'm sure it's out there on the forums and stuff like that, but I will say this, uh, any type of DHB is going to be associated with PIP. It may not be right away, right? But two, three days later, yeah, you're gonna feel that shit. You know, bottom line, you're, you're gonna feel it. Right now, the best way to go about it, uh, as far as minimizing PIP, right, you can either uh, mix it, you know, with other oil, right, meaning you know, go ahead and blend it with your test, blend it with any other compound that you got a pin on that day, right. Another idea uh, that you know, one guy he wasn't really aware of was warming the oil. Now, you don't want to pin hot ass oil, but you know. Uh, warmed oil that will flow through the uh, the syringe rather easily through the needle rather easily right will uh, minimize PIP it will assist with the absorption and disbursement of that hormone so you know it won't be so bad uh, over an extended period of time now 
The strongest thing I've ever pinned was uh, EQ at 700 milligrams per mil. I didn't feel shit initially. Four days later, felt like my leg was fucking crippled, right? DHB pip, in my opinion, uh, feels kind of like bass. Uh, it lasts longer. The pip will last longer than bass. You know, you might have a limp for a little bit, but it's not really going to impede your training. Uh, the best way to go about that that I found is to pin it, you know, uh, daily, right, until you get your dosage, right, and then pin various spots, right? You know, just don't sit there. If you're going to pin 200 milligrams of DHB, I highly recommend you not pin it, you know, into your, you know, all of it into your glute or all of it into your quad, you know, pin 50 in, your, in each quad, you know, 50 in each glute, that'd be a good way to disperse that 200 milligrams throughout your body. Spread the pip out a little bit, right? So that way there's a balance to it and you're not running around hobbling, you know? So any DHB that you get out there, and I don't care what anybody claims, any DHB out there will have some pip. Now, there will be, you know, different amounts of pip, right? Depending upon uh, the chemicals used within uh, their recipe, right? Uh, people ask about the DHB from Swole Blood Premium. It's not that bad in my opinion. However, I will warn you in advance, it's there. Why is it there? Because the shit's real. If you're getting pipless DHB, right, you might want to run a test on it, whether it be the Palumbo test kit or whatever, just to see what the heck it is. Now, the color ranges might be uh, fairly close, but that DHB you probably uh, register. I haven't tested it myself, but I'm imagining it'll probably come in about the same color as EQ. So, you know, there are going to be different variations of it, and it's going to depend upon the concentration. But as you all know, there's not too much highly concentrated DHB out there because everybody knows it has PIP. So be wary of where you buy your DHB. Make sure that you uh, buy all of your compounds and uh, assisting agents from reputable uh, places. But anyhow, also, uh, swole blood, right? I broke away from that, no longer associated with that. However, uh, there is Swole Blood Premium. Now, uh, for those of you that know, the line is expansive. Yeah, I mean, huge. For those of you that have uh, received Swole Blood Premium, you know that the stealth is fucking out of this world, right? So I don't know, uh, you know where it's been talked about. I don't really keep track of those things. I don't really get on the forums much, right? But, you know... If any of you guys have fucked with Full Blood Premium, you already know the deal. But just to let you know, uh, that's out there, right? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. You can find me here on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, no, I am not uh, doing anything illegal. I'm just sitting here talking about it. So, you know, whatever. You can think what the fuck you want to think. But once again, got these Full Blood Tees too. No, these are not for sale quite yet. <laughs> You, if you if you if you follow me on on certain social media platforms, you know how to go about getting one. But anyhow, so this is my video. We discuss different esterifications uh, for coaching recommendations, which the majority of them I find pretty uh, fucking hard to swallow, simply because they don't make sense. You know, uh, if your coach looks like a, a hot bag of shit, if your coach ain't on gear, if they don't look good on gear. How can they make you look good on gear? That's just my thoughts on that, you know. Um, also, we talked about DHB, right? Company out there with pipless DHB, which I find to be bullshit because I haven't run across any DHB that doesn't have any fucking pip. Now, I find, I've found varying levels of pip, but there is always pip, to my knowledge. If you know of any pipless DHB out there, please feel free to send me a vial of it. I'll have it tested and checked out. But... You know, I'll pin the shit. I don't give a fuck. You know, I will definitely see, but don't send me no bullshit. But anyhow, this is my video for the day. I know I've been gone for a long time. Obviously, I've been up to other shit. Um, for those of you guys that have uh, missed me, I'm back, bitches. But anyhow, all right. Hey, you know the fucking deal. It's your boy, 44, and I'm out, baby. Thank you to the 44 and Swole Blood for keeping it hardcore in this world of pussy boys and pansies. Ah!